This episode of Thinking in English is proudly sponsored by Lingoda. Lingoda is an incredible online language school with over 1,000 teachers and classes available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have free time on a Wednesday morning? You can take an intermediate conversation class on Lingoda. Your plans cancelled on Friday night? Take a business English class on Lingoda. Lingoda offers both group classes and individual classes from beginner to advanced levels. But what I like the most is Lingoda's language sprints. By joining a sprint, you can get up to 100% of your money back if you take classes every day for two months. This is my plan for the summer. I'm hoping to brush up on my Spanish skills and Lingoda will definitely be the place to do it. You can try Lingoda yourself with their 7-day free trial, where you can take 3 group classes completely for free. And if you use my code THINKINGENGLISH, that's THINKING ENGLISH, you get 30% off your first payment. That's right, 30% off if you use the code THINKINGENGLISH. The link to try Lingoda is in the description. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Confucius was one of the most influential philosophers and teachers of all time. Today, I want to examine his approach to education and learning and see if there are any lessons we can all learn from him. You can find the full transcript for this episode for free over on the Thinking in English blog, check out my YouTube channel and Instagram page, both called Thinking in English, join my conversation club for bonus episodes and regular English practice, and thank you to Lingoda for sponsoring this episode. Confucius, also known as Kong Zhu, was a Chinese philosopher, teacher and political figure who lived from 551 to 479 BCE. He is widely regarded as one of the most influential thinkers in Chinese history and the founder of Confucianism, a philosophical and ethical system that has had a profound impact on Chinese culture and society. Confucius was born in the state of Lu, in what is now modern-day Chufu, Shandong province in China. His father died when he was young and he was raised by his mother and older siblings. Despite his humble beginnings, Confucius was a highly intelligent and ambitious young man who aspired to become a great statesman and scholar. He began his career as a government official in his early 20s, serving in a variety of roles before eventually becoming a magistrate in his hometown of Chufu. After becoming disillusioned with the corrupt and inefficient government of his time, Confucius began to focus on his teaching and writing. Travelling throughout China, teaching and spreading his philosophy to anyone who would listen, he attracted a large following of students who admired his wisdom and charisma. Many of his teachings were recorded in the Analects, a collection of his sayings and conversations with his disciples. Confucius believed that society should be based on a strict moral code of conduct, with individuals striving to be virtuous and fulfil their social responsibilities. He emphasised the importance of education, self-improvement and respect for authority, and his teachings stressed the value of social harmony and the role of government in promoting the common good. Despite his influence and popularity, Confucius was never able to achieve his dream of becoming a statesman. He died in 479 BCE, at the age of 72, and was buried in a grand tomb in Chufu. His teachings and legacy, however, have continued to shape Chinese culture and society for over 2,000 years, and he remains one of the most revered figures in Chinese history. Confucianism is the ideas of Confucius. It is a complex and multifaceted philosophy. Its teachings are centred on the idea of personal and societal improvement through the cultivation of virtuous behaviour and ethical conduct. 
Confucianism emphasizes the importance of education as a means of achieving personal and societal improvement, with an emphasis on the pursuit of knowledge and practical experience. One of the core teachings of Confucianism is the belief in social harmony and the promotion of the common good. Confucian thought emphasizes the importance of respecting others and fulfilling one's social responsibilities, as well as the role of the government in promoting social harmony, ensuring the well-being of its citizens. Another important aspect of Confucianism is its emphasis on respect for authority and tradition. Confucian teachings stress the importance of following the customs and traditions of one's ancestors as well as the need to respect and obey authority figures. This has helped to shape Chinese society into a hierarchical and orderly system, with a strong emphasis on respecting and following the rules. According to Confucius, learning is a lifelong pursuit that requires dedication and persistence, and some of his teachings can be applied to English learning or language learning in general. Confucianism's focus on practice and repetition is highly relevant to language learning. Learning is viewed as a process of continual improvement, achieved through consistent practice and repetition. This approach is highly applicable to language learning, as it requires consistent practice and repetition to achieve proficiency. Moreover, Confucianism promotes the idea of learning by doing, it emphasizes the importance of hands-on experience, as opposed to simply memorizing information. This approach is highly applicable to language learning, as it requires practical experience and application to achieve mastery. Confucianism encourages language learners to engage in conversations, read and write in your target language, and immerse yourself in the language as much as possible. Confucianism also emphasizes the importance of social harmony and respect for others. In English learning, this means being respectful and open-minded towards people who speak different languages and have different cultural backgrounds. Confucianism promotes the idea of embracing diversity and learning from others, which is also highly relevant to language learning. So next, I want to take a look at a few famous quotes attributed to Confucius and discuss how they can be a motivational and inspirational tool for all of us. Isn't it a pleasure to study and practice what you have learned? Isn't it also great when friends visit from distant places? The first quote attributed to Confucius that I think could prove useful to English learners is, isn't it a pleasure to study and practice what you have learned? Isn't it also great when friends visit from distant places? Studying and practicing a language can be a challenging and time-consuming task, but it is also an opportunity for personal growth and development. By taking pleasure in the learning process and finding joy in the progress that is made, you can stay motivated and engaged in your studies. I personally have found great joy in using the languages I have learned, Japanese and a little Chinese, to make friends and communicate with people from distant places. It is one of the best parts of language learning. Just as it is wonderful to have friends visit from distant places, it is also beneficial for language learners and English learners to connect with others who speak the language they are learning. This can be done through language exchange programs, conversation clubs or partners, or simply engaging in social activities with other English learners. Building a community of fellow English learners can provide support and motivation and opportunities for practice and improvement. I hear, I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. Confucius suggests there are different levels of learning and understanding. Simply hearing information may not be enough to fully comprehend it but seeing something can help cement it in your memory. However, the most effective way to truly understand something is to engage with it actively and do it oneself. This is highly relevant to all of you listening. 
who I guess often face the challenge of mastering new vocabulary, grammar rules and pronunciation. While listening to a language, watching videos or reading texts can be helpful for memorising and understanding new concepts, it is only through active practice that learners can truly internalise and use the language. Therefore, this quote always reminds me that practising and using the language actively is essential for gaining a deeper understanding and mastery of it. By engaging with the language through activities such as speaking, writing and listening to authentic materials, you can move beyond passively learning and truly begin to comprehend and use the language in practical situations. A man who has committed a mistake and doesn't correct it is committing another mistake. Making mistakes is a natural and necessary part of the learning process. What sets successful learners apart is their ability to identify and correct those mistakes, rather than ignoring and repeating them. This quote is particularly relevant for those of you listening who may feel discouraged by your mistakes or who may be hesitant to correct them for fear of appearing foolish or making further errors. It is important to recognise that correcting mistakes is an essential step towards improvement and success in English learning. By taking the time to identify and correct mistakes, you can improve your language skills and gain confidence in your abilities. This may involve seeking feedback from others like teachers or tutors, practicing speaking and writing regularly, and being willing to learn from your own mistakes. By three methods, we may learn wisdom. First, by reflection, which is noblest. Second, by imitation, which is easiest. And third, by experience, which is the bitterest. Confucius believes there are three roots to wisdom. The first method, reflection, is described as the noblest way to learn wisdom. This involves taking the time to think critically and deeply about a subject or experience and analysing it from different perspectives. In the context of English learning, reflection may involve analysing your own language use, identifying areas for improvement and setting goals for the future. The second method, imitation, is described as the easiest way to learn wisdom. This involves observing and emulating the behaviour and language use of others. In language learning, imitation may involve listening to and repeating native speakers, or studying examples of well-written texts in order to improve your own writing skills. And finally, the third method, experience, is described as the bitterest way to learn wisdom. This involves learning through trial and error, and often involves making mistakes and facing challenges, hence why it is the bitterest, lots of challenges. For those of you listening, experience may involve practising speaking and writing skills in real-life situations, or learning from the mistakes made during language use. You can all benefit from incorporating all three methods into your learning process, whether it be through self-reflection, observation, copying native speakers, or practising language use in real life. When you see a worthy person, endeavour to emulate him. When you see an unworthy person, then examine your inner self. The first part of the quote, when you see a worthy person, endeavour to emulate him, encourages you to seek out and observe people who you admire and who you consider to be worthy. By emulating the behaviour, language use or work ethic of those people, you can strive to improve your own skills and become more like the people you admire. The second part of the quote, when you see a unworthy person, then examine your inner self, encourages you to examine your inner selves when you encounter people who can, you consider to be unworthy. This means reflecting on your own behaviour and your own values in comparison to the actions of the people you are observing. In doing so, English learners can identify areas for self-improvement and work towards becoming better versions of themselves. By seeking out and emulating native speakers or proficient English speakers, learners like you can develop language skills more effectively. 
Similarly, by examining your own language use and reflecting on areas for improvement, you can work towards becoming more proficient and fluent in English. The essence of knowledge is having it to apply it, not having it to confess your ignorance. As a language learner, learner, the quote, the essence of knowledge is having it to apply it, not having it to confess your ignorance, can serve as an important reminder of the value of practical application and humility in the pursuit of knowledge. In terms of practical application, it's not enough to simply have knowledge. It must also be used in order for you to truly understand and benefit from it. This applies to language learning really well. It's not enough to just memorize vocabulary and grammar rules, but actively use them in conversations, writing and other contexts. At the same time, the quote highlights the importance of recognizing your own limitations and being willing to admit when you don't know something. This humility allows us to continue learning and growing rather than becoming complacent and stagnant in our own knowledge. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. Progress can be made even if it's slow, as long as you don't give up completely. I know that many of you may feel frustrated with your progress or overwhelmed by the amount of knowledge you need to acquire to become fluent in English. Confucius tells us that even small steps can eventually lead to success. Learning a new language is not easy and it takes time and effort. This quote encourages you to keep going, even if you encounter difficulties or setbacks. As language learners, we can take this quote as a reminder to stay committed to our goals and not give up, even if our progress seems slow. We can appreciate the small steps we take and trust that they will eventually add up to significant progress. With perseverance and hard work, we can achieve our language learning objectives. So they were some useful quotes from Confucius. But while Confucianism has had a profound impact on Chinese culture and society, its teachings have also been the subject of controversy and debate. One of the main controversies surrounding Confucianism is its focus on tradition and authority, which some people argue can harm creativity and innovation. Others argue that Confucian teachings can promote social conformity and discourage individuality, which can limit personal freedom and expression. Some people argue Confucian teachings reinforce social inequality and privilege and can limit opportunities for people who are not born into privileged families. And Confucian teachings can be seen as reinforcing gender roles and stereotypes, which can be seen as limiting opportunities for women. When it comes to language learning, Confucian teachings can be both helpful and hindering. On the one hand, Confucianism emphasises the importance of education and the pursuit of knowledge, which can encourage individuals to study and learn a new language. On the other hand, Confucian teachings can also reinforce the importance of following traditional methods and learning from authority figures, which may not always be the best approach to language learning. As with all philosophies and philosophers from the past, it is best to approach their ideas and wisdom with a critical perspective. So here is today's final thought. Despite being an ancient philosopher, many of Confucius's teachings and ideas could be useful, maybe even motivational for English learners. For Confucius, learning is a lifelong pursuit that requires dedication and persistence. From his teachings, we can learn that even if progress is slow, it is still progress, that you need to learn from your mistakes, and that we learn best through experience and doing. While some Confucian teachings are controversial today, his ideas can be useful and beneficial for language learners. But what do you think? Are you a fan of Confucius's philosophy? What philosopher or philosophy should we look at next? 
I've already recorded episodes on Stoicism and on Socrates, and now this one on Confucius and Confucianism. What should I look at next? Let me know by leaving a comment on Spotify, sending me a message on Instagram, or you can, of course, leave a comment on the transcript over on the Thinking in English blog. Uh, the link is in the description. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode. Please check out my YouTube channel and Instagram page, both called Thinking in English Podcast. Subscribe to my Patreon for conversation clubs, study groups, bonus episodes, English classes and one-on-one -on -one classes with myself. And leave a like, rating and review wherever you are listening right now. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.